Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. And I am proud to announce that all of the submissions this week were properly labeled, which I am stoked about. And we're going to have a really good conversation today. There's lots of good questions. There's lots of good stuff going on. And mm, housekeeping or prayer? Let's open with prayer for funsies. I'm just tuning in to see what you guys need. I am in full agreement for solutions. Solutions, ease, clarity, answers, resolution and consensus, deep knowing, trust, and connection to something greater than yourself. And I am also in full agreement for you to feel confident in accessing your own greatness so that divinity that dwells within you, I'm in full agreement for you to tap into that this week, for you to stay connected to that as often as humanly possible and to move from that space. I'm in full agreement for you to be reminded that all can be revealed, that ever or all can be all can be solved, all can be provided, all can be resolved and Everyone involved in any situation that you're dealing with right now can be fully accommodated by the universe. I'm in full agreement for you to recognize the full power of the universe at large, the full power of God, and to use that to your advantage. All right. So that is the collective prayer. Deep breath. Soak it in. Okay. So housekeeping really quick. I just want to mention, I've been doing a ton of curiosity calls. It's been rad. I've been having the best conversations with people. And I do want to let you know that the nightery for January 2023 is about half full. So I think there's five people who are in. This could change by the time this episode comes out on Sunday. So I just want to let you know that if you had a curiosity call and you haven't secured your seat, I I would uh, highly recommend doing that because I don't know where things are going to be on Sunday or this coming week. I have more calls um, in this upcoming week. So it really is a matter of, just whoever secures their spot first. So I just wanted to put that out there, let you know. And what else? We have Astral Playground. I'm still taking more curiosity calls. If you want to chat with something, chat about something directly with me in terms of masterminds, programs, anything that you're interested in, I'm available for that. I'm most excited about the Astral Playground. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. I'm really excited for that. And we've got a New Year meditation. There's just, it is a freaking candy store in my world right now. And so I recommend you check it out. So all of the links to everything will be in the description box and show notes. So get in if you're interested. All right, let's go to podcast submissions. I love you guys so much for labeling these correctly. God, it makes my life so much easier. Okay, so first we are starting with a prayer request. This is this is the message. It's anonymous. Anytime I feel like I'm figuring out my next step, life suddenly feels unbalanced. It feels like with more clarity and dreams, I also feel more lost and unsure where to go next. I'm dealing with burnout constantly, requesting prayers for sustained clarity, ease, and direction, allowance to let go and surrender. So I'm in full agreement for you to remove your mind and and 
pull back your mind from the how and just allow yourself to bask in the pleasure of the desire itself. So what, what it looks like is happening is as soon as you want something, you ask how. How am I going to get there? And that, of course, is part of what will contribute to feeling more exhaustion. If you're already burnt out and then you want something and you're looking at action in order to compensate for just energetic alignment, that is the path to burnout. So I'm in full agreement for you to drop the how and drop the action and instead focus on what are you emitting frequency wise. I'm in full agreement for you to pay attention to your thoughts, your emotions, your inner dialogue, full agreement for you to hold the vision unconditionally and to enjoy the vision unconditionally. And that will speed you along your path inevitably. Okay. I'm going to answer this question and then we're going to go into the advice column. So I received a question that says, can you please discuss the clairs more? What is the energetic formula behind these and how may I sharpen using them myself? It looks like there's a big connection to the third eye chakra. Okay. So I don't, I don't want to go into all of the clairs because I already did a podcast episode where I unpack all of that. It's the intuition episode. I think it's one of, it's way, way, way older, but I explain all of the different, um, intuitive senses essentially. So I would point you back to that. And then the other piece, as far as the, the third eye, I would say there are so many different philosophies about different chakra systems because it's not even fair to say that there is one universal chakra system. It's it, it depends on who you're talking to. So there's fluidity and flexibility within that. I've done a podcast episode on that as well. Um, so when it comes to the third eye, my interpretation, my perspective on that is that is the space of imagination and that is the space of um, just vision in general, v- vision, ideas, inspiration, you, you, you get the point. So I don't put all of the other Claire's in the, the same category. So Claire Cognizance, for example, I would say that's more of a crown thing. Uh, clairvoyance is more of a third eye thing. Clairsentience is different. So they can all access or they can all be experienced in different parts of the energetic body and the energetic system. So I don't like lumping them into one category. Also, because it's worth saying, your energetic field is fluid it's, you can think about it as like this ethereal fluid that you have circulating all the time. At least you want it to be circulating all the time. So because it's constantly in motion, all of these different areas are sensitive. So anything technically can be, um, experienced or held or received in different parts of the energetic body, but particularly when it comes to mental pictures, visions, imagination, however that is for you. So even if you are not visual, it's not like you don't have imagination. You do have imagination. It's just a different style of imagination. So the same way some people have uh, inner dialogue, um, like from a first person standpoint, and then there's other people who have different types of internal experiences. So go check out the podcast on intuition. It's an older episode. And I also talk about uh, sharpening them in that. So that that is where I would direct you. This is a juicy one. This is for Monica. It says, I was a full-time teacher for eight years, and I was never 100% in it. I love my students, but it's the most draining job. 
I had my son in March 2021 and decided I wanted something with more freedom. I invested $10,000 to get certified to be a pediatric sleep consultant, but ever since then, I since then I have a couple months on it feeling like it could be successful and then a couple months in a dark place and don't put much effort into it. On top of that, I've invested over $5,000 in money programs and a business coach with very little return success in my business. I started subbing this year and am even looking for another teaching job so that we can hopefully get a house. That was very long, but basically, what do I do? I don't want to teach again, but success in my business feels so far away, almost impossible at this point. Okay, there's ma- there's many things that I want to say, but when you're thinking about distance or process, make sure that you're looking at it from an emotional standpoint. So you're correct in that the business success feels really far away because you're in in the pits, basically. And when you're there emotionally, the distance between the feeling of success and the feeling of despair, anguish, um, doubt, fear, anything like that, that's the distance. It's not time. Time... I mean, good God, I did a whole class on time. That's a much more complicated uh, discussion that I'm not going to open up here. But understand that the distance has nothing to do with time. It has everything to do with where you are emotionally and energetically. So that's the first thing that I want to make really clear. And any time you're in despair, you feel far. That, that's just how it works. And then when you're feeling joy, when you're feeling ecstasy, when you're having a really good time, then you feel close because the frequency is really, really high and it's really compatible with what you want. So the other thing that I want to mention is about the energy in which you are moving or let, let me put it this way, the perspective that you're holding as you are circulating energy, i.e. money. If you say, this sucks, get me away from this, and then you're paying from a place of this sucks, get me away from this, the, the investment that you're making is going to be dormant, more than likely. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, but the problem is that someone can give you the best advice on earth. They can give you the best strategies, the best approach, everything that you need to know, you probably already have. But if you are saying, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, nothing will be able to override that. So when it comes to investing in something, it, what it sounds like to me is the investments were made from a space of resistance. Like I am resisting this experience. I hate this experience. And so I'm investing so that the investment can pull me out. And that's not how investments work. Investments are, you know, perhaps equipping you with tools or experiences that you'd like to have or developing a certain aspect within yourself. There's many different reasons why you invest, but I want to make it really clear. It doesn't matter if the investment is a book or something much larger or some type of certification. You are where the magic lives. You are the one who's in charge of the creation. You are ultimately in the driver's seat. So you want to make sure that you are in an energetically correct place before you start circulating energy. Now, if if you are let's I'm I'm going to assume you still have access to these materials that you've already invested in. I would say go comb through the material that you already have with the intention of I am going to do this. I am going to improve my emotional state. I'm going to improve my experience and it's going to work. 
I already have everything that I need. I'm going to pick the thing that I feel most called to in this moment, and it's going to work. So your work is to talk yourself into the energy of this is going to work. And don't do anything until you are energetically behind it. You feel it, you believe it, you think it, you know it, you're there. And when you're there, then... And that will change what you're experiencing. But this is this is where people get really tripped up is the, there's nuances to this, but there can be codependency with investments. Like I'm going to do this so I can get that, like a very conditional relationship rather than looking at the core of what it is, is you are embodied and emitting something that the universe responds to. And then the action is the whipped cream and the cherry. Always. You guys know how often I say that. So you want to make sure that you're getting it correct in terms of the order of operations that you have going on. Now, don't get me wrong, there's bad work that exists. There's stuff that just is low quality that exists. So that's where your discernment kicks in. But it's one of those things that if you are not tending to the emotional and mental maintenance, then things will grow out of control. And so if you happen to have money magic, this is why I talk about mental mold. Right. So this is a perfect example of mental mold growing out of control. If you don't have money magic, I'm not selling it to you. I don't think you should pay a dime for anything until you set the intention that you are going to use what you have and it is going to work. What you have now is available to you. It is going to work. It is going to be effective. The tools that you have at your disposal are going to equip you with things that will create an emotional and energetic shift. That's what I would recommend for now. Don't spend any more money unless it is absolutely from a clear space where you're feeling amazing, where you're feeling really good, and it's inspired. But you, in order to feel inspired, you have to be in a, an emotional state where you can receive the inspiration. So that's, again, that's your work. But I think you already, you already have everything that you need. This is just a matter of getting yourself behind, this is possible, this can work, doing the emotional work. Let me see if there's anything else I want to mention. Also, I would I would just like to clarify when you're talking about put effort towards it. Make sure your your effort is orienting more in the emotional direction. So instead of the effort being the business stuff, the action, the social media, for now, for now, just play with the idea of This is possible. This can work. I'm looking forward to feeling better. Like whatever, whatever threads you can grab onto that are more affirmative and in alignment in the direction that you want to go, grab onto that. Do that. As far as the money goes and not knowing what to do, like in like making a decision about teaching or business, what I would say is do the emotional work and the mindset work around the money and let the right next step reveal itself to you. So the only work to do is going to be emotional and then the clarity will drop in from that that solid emotional place. And that way you're not putting pressure on, I need to do the right thing so I get the money. It's I'm emitting the energy of I'm available for money and then the inspired next step can find you. Okay, so on this note, I've been having a conversation on my close friends list on Instagram. And I did not I did not want to talk about these things publicly, but it was along the same lines of 
investments, right? And just some of the like crappy things that people do. I won't I won't rehash all of the tea that is in the ether right now. But what I will say is in the world of investments, my recommendation when you're shopping for things or you're looking for practitioners or you're wanting to improve your life and you're wanting to um you're you're wanting to work spell spell that ether t <laughs> no i it's um i am not prepared to have that conversation publicly <laughs> I'll say that. I can say it to a few people, but I'm not ready to like like go go in depth on it. I might at some point, but I'm not prepared for it right now. But I are are you kidding me? I'm a sucker for tea. Okay, so what I would say to anyone who is wanting to invest or in the personal development world or anything like that, start small so that you can develop your intuition and your discernment ar- around investments first. So there are there is a certain thread that exists online that is constantly talking about you need to be investing at your absolute maximum all the time long term in order to get results. And I want to let you know I have said it here. I have maintained this position the entire time, and I am saying it again. The universe does not respond to your investments. The universe responds to your frequency. It responds to your energy. That is what the universe is responding to, period. And if you get an energetic shift as a result of reading a book that costed $15 or going to one of my free masterclasses and you just soak up everything from that masterclass and you implement it and it creates a shift, that is what the universe is going to respond to. And there is a slimy marketing tactic which says the universe is not going to take you seriously. If if you want to make a lot of money, you need to spend a lot of money. Otherwise, the universe isn't going to consider you to be wealthy or whatever. And I just want to let you know that if anyone is saying that they're full of shit and they've got something to sell you. And that's not, that's not how any of this works. Like I said, money comes from God, source, the universe. That is my belief. It does not come from being at your financial edge all the time and paying, 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 paying. That is not how money is made. That is not how money is received. And so in the, in bigger investment territory, it can be, people can get money drunk. Like spending money creates a strong uh, chemical response in the body. And so just be aware of that if you're new if you're not experienced with investing in practitioners, now I've been doing this a long time, so I've got a good nose for bullshit, but not everyone has that. And so this is why my recommendation is start small. Start with a level of risk that makes sense for you. That might be a book. If what you can handle in this moment is purchasing a book and that's an edge. And investing, I've already done an episode, of, of course, I've done a podcast episode on this too. Just investment means energy. I'm investing energy, whether that's time investment, resource investment, money investment, um, whatever. The energetic investment into something is... It's a skill. Investing well is a skill. Investing in yourself well is a skill. Being able to identify a need within yourself that you want to uh, fulfill or a desire that you have within yourself that you want to um, experience, that is a skill set that if you're new, you probably haven't developed So a good practice, in my opinion, in 
and all things personal development. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a therapist. It could be a naturopath. It could be all sorts of different practitioners. It is not limited to any industry because there's crappy practitioners in every, every industry and there's amazing practitioners in every industry. Including I, I got a, in the conversation, someone asked me about regulation and un, you know, not regulated fields and unregulated fields. And my opinion on regulation is it doesn't work. You can go to a board certified plastic surgeon who can kill you and get a slap on the wrist. You can go to a board certified plastic surgeon and get botched. You can go to a garden variety MD. They can accidentally write down the wrong amount of medication and kill you. Like medical malpractice, the medical field is one of the most regulated and medical malpractice is a huge issue. So it's, I don't think regulation works because you can't regulate human error. You will not be able to implement enough regulations that will be able to prevent people from fucking up or doing terrible things. Look at therapists. I know countless therapists that have traumatized their clients and there's a board, there's a board for therapists and not every therapist that does something fucked up is getting removed. So regulation doesn't work. It doesn't matter if something's regulated. And as a matter of fact, I just think it, it it's a waste of time. It's a total waste of time. So Instead, my recommendation is that you become savvy in your discernment and intuition. I've made bad investments, and a lot of the time that I made bad investments, it was one, either a divine intervention, like uh, if you know if you know about my life blowing up in the Bay Area, that bad investment was a literal divine intervention. And other times that I've made like a, a bad investment that... N- nothing that broke me, but it just wasn't quite right. It was because I wasn't listening to my intuition. It wasn't a full body hell yeah. And that just didn't pan out. So you have to develop this skill. And that's why I'm st- saying start with smaller risk. That's not for everyone, but that's my recommendation is so that if you are practicing developing the skill, you're not doing anything that is going to, you know, harm you, right? There's a difference between spending $10,000 on something and spending $300 for a little online course or something like that. Those are two different types of risk. And so you just want to become more savvy in what you're investing in. And that also goes for Free stuff. Free stuff is a great way to like get a taste of the practitioner, get a feel for the practitioner or what they have to offer. Look, look up people's videos, like do thorough shopping. I even did this for um, pelvic floor physical therapy. So when I was looking for pelvic floor physical therapy, I made sure I watched all the YouTube videos. I got a feel for the founder. What's her philosophy on this? What's their specialty? What are, what, what's going on here? And once I was able to see like, oh, I really dig the approach of this particular pelvic floor physical therapy place. It was, it was a no brainer. It was, yes, this is the investment that I want to make. So it, I I love that we get to work on all of these different things and develop all these different skills and work with awesome people. And like, I, I love working with practitioners because I'm friends with pretty much all of them <laughs> every time I work with someone. So all of this is good. All the skills that you develop are good. But the investment skill is an important one because it requires you to understand your discernment. And whether or not, um, and also understanding your own habits. Like, are you the type of person who will watch something for free and just like soak up every single ounce of that free item and implement every single piece? Or are you someone who really is not activated by anything free and you do need to put some skin in the game in order to 
you know, move you into action because some people are like that as well. Um, sometimes I'll talk to clients and I'm like, oh yeah, so in Fabric of the Universe, I've referenced Fabric of the Universe quite often. And they'll say, oh no, I didn't watch that. And that was that was a free masterclass that I did in the springtime. And I'm like, what? You didn't take advantage of that? Oh my God. But some people don't. Some people wait until they pay. And then it's like, okay, now that I've now that I've um, lit that fire, I'm actually able to consume this and digest it and implement it in a way that I wasn't able to when it was free. So that's why I'm saying this is a skill. It's something where it requires a lot of uh, self-awareness. It requires you to be clear on, is someone trying to get you money drunk? Or is this actually an experience that you desire to have? Is there deep resonance? Or are you just high on someone's strategy and how they're talking about something? There's, there's, layers and layers and layers of nuance to this. And so that's why my best recommendation for all of this stuff is to just get good at identifying what is right for you and what your style is in small ways first. Digest what you can and implement what you can. Get good at implementation. This is the other thing that I see a lot of people do is they'll like hoard digital content. They'll like buy everything but not implement it. And so I I recommend people, I've been giving this recommendation to a lot of people, like go back to what you've already done. Go back to the things that you've already purchased. Go back to the free stuff that's available. Go back to the things that you have already purchased and milk them. Use them. You know, because there is a lot of really great stuff available to you. So anyway, that's my spiel. But I I promise you there is no, there is not enough bubble wrap that will uh, be able to um, help you understand whether or not something is good or bad for you. You're the only one who's going to be able to tell what that is. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's heavily, heavily regulated or not. There's always a risk. And, you know, lots of shitty people exist in heavily regulated industries. So that that has nothing to do with it. This is about discernment, intuition, listening to your body. Oh, let me say this as well. When someone says, I was really triggered by this practitioner, so I knew I had to hire them. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I never, ever, ever recommend doing that because if you, your nervous system is set off, that means you're not thinking clearly. And if you're not thinking clearly, you're not going to be making good decisions. There's a difference between being inspired and lit up and and activated in all the right spots and your nervous system being frazzled and spending money from that space. Don't do that. Keep your money. Don't fall for that. And that's what I'll say about that. I'm going to read this for the week and then if there are any questions, I'll answer them after. King of Pentacles, stability. Ooh, I love this. And I love all the grapes on this card. Mm, I just want to keep looking at it. Doesn't it feel luxurious? And just like, oh, I can relax. I can relax into the stability. I can relax into whatever's coming next. I know I'm fully supported. That's what this is giving. And then the moon. So this is not knowing what's going on beyond the veil. Enjoy the mystery. 
Like allow yourself to just appreciate and enjoy the unfolding story that you have going on without a need to peek around every single corner. I want to do that right now. I have no clue what's going on in my world. So I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to know everything that's going on. But if you can let yourself just feel into unconditional support, I don't know what's coming next, but I'm going to feel into the support of God, the support of divine source. Just relax into that. Let yourself be refueled with that energy. And it's going to make it a lot more pleasurable. So the mind, the mind can't stand the moon. It's like, we need to know, we need to know how, we need to know when, we need to know who, and the moon really wants that to just be unknown at the moment. And then 10 of cups. Can you allow yourself to unconditionally access the state of being in celebration? being in pleasure, being in love, being in success, like embodied focused success. Because remember, if you're embodying stability and you're embodying success and you're emitting success and you're just you're just brimming with life force and you're leaning back and you're letting God organize the pieces, all of that, what you're going to be an energetic match for is going to be incredible one way or another. So if you can hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, it's going to go well. Let yourself do that this week. It has the potential to just be a a truly fantastic week. You just want to make sure that the, the analytical mind is not getting in the way of all of these things. What else do I want to say about this? It's just that age old question that wants you to contemplate it, which is if you knew it all worked out, if you knew you were successful, if you knew that you got to have the thing, how would you feel and go there now? So that's what this is really about. I love this spread, though. Are you kidding me? It's like, let it be a surprise. Let it surprise and delight you. But yes, this is all about your your inner world. Really, really, really just get solid in that inner world. It is not going to lead you astray. You cannot look at the pieces as they're reorganizing and feel feel good if it's not totally lined up. Okay, let me say this other piece. 3D lags every time. Density lags every single time. So you you have to get over that. You have to accept that density, physical form is going to take it it's going to take a second. It's not that it takes time. It just requires that you unconditionally hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it long enough for things to click into place and to actually materialize. So don't drop it. Just keep holding it. Keep holding it. A lot of the time when people say, oh, it hasn't happened yet or why isn't this happening? It's because you're dropping it. It's not because the universe is not capable of meeting you. It's because you're not emitting it long enough to where the universe, uh, universal forces have coagulated to the point where you're actually visibly seeing it. Woo! (laughs) I'm on one today. All right. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Once again, book a call. Curiosity calls are available. I'm filling up the nightery for January. It's going to be a blast. So if you're wanting to get in on that, go get it. We're going to have an amazing time. And yeah, have an awesome week, everyone. I will talk to you later.